So in the first two videos, we looked at the Pix Racer. First of all, we went through the individual parts of the board and talked about that, and then we actually plugged everything together. So we connected the radio receiver, the ESCs, and everything else like the GPS external magnetometer. So now we're going to go through and finish the calibration. So we have it plugged into the laptop and we're running Q ground control. So here's the interface as we have it here. Now as we left it, most of these things were red and what we have to do is go through everything and take care of anything that's red in order to get it ready to fly for the first time. The first one that's going to be red is going to be your airframe. So if you click on airframe here on the left hand side, then you get a list of all of the different airframes that you can choose from. And there's loads and loads of different types here. So you just choose the one that you want and then you click on apply and restart. That should take you back to here and then it'll show you that the airframe is all taken care of. The next one that we'll do is the radio. Now for this we need to make sure that the radio is plugged in as we did in the previous setup. Now I've created a very simple model on the radio and we're going to use that to do all of the radio setup. So now we've got that set up, we're going to click on radio and then we're going to go through the calibration routine. So it says we should zero all your trims and sub trims on the radio, which we have. The way I have it set up here on the Tronus is it goes throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder. And then we have a couple of switches for the different modes. So now we've got that ready. I'm going to make sure that all my trims are in the center position and click OK. And then it says lower the throttle stick all the way down as shown in the diagram. And again here we need to make sure we've got the right mode selected. But we need to have it so that the throttle appears that way. We're making sure, of course, that we don't have the main flight battery connected for this bit and we have no props on for this entire setup because everything we do in here potentially could cause something to start up. So we don't want power until, until we're ready at the very end to do the last test. So we click next. It says move the throttle stick all the way up and hold it there, which I will. It'll detect that. It'll then assign the right channel. It says move the throttle stick all the way down and leave it there. So we'll do that. And there it is, it's been detected. Move the yaw stick all the way to the right. And again, we're just copying the image here. So we're going to move it all the way to the right. It says now move it all the way to the left. And what this is doing, this is not only calibrating the radio, but it's also teaching the the Pixhawk exactly which channel is which. So very similar to things like the CC3D and some of the more sophisticated flight controllers as well. It makes it harder to mess things up. Next thing we need to do is move the roll stick to the right. So I'll move the roll stick over to the right hand side. Hold it there. And then move all the way to the left. Hold it there. Then it says now move the pitch stick or the elevator to the top, which we've done and now all the way down. And this is also sorting out all of the normal or reverse settings as well. Allow the pitch stick to move back to the center, which we have. Move all the transmitter switches and our dials back and forth to their extreme positions. So I have a couple of switches on here that we have set for this stuff. Altitude hold, drift mode, circle mode, loiter mode, return to launch, drift mode, altitude hold, stabilize mode. Drift mode, circle mode, loiter mode, return to launch. So now we've done all of that. We're going to click next. And then we're going to click next and that's going to write all of those settings back to the board. So now if I move the throttle on the radio, we see the throttle value go up and down. There is perfect, great. If I move the yaw to the left hand side, there it is moving as well. So we have all of the calibration done. So now you'll notice when we go back to the summary, 
that the airframe and the radio is taken care of. You'll also notice in the radio that there's no settings in here for changing between things like PPM and S bus. Now we're using a D4R2 which is PPM but in the setups that we've done here it just seems to figure that out which is quite clever. Next thing we need to do then is flight modes. So flight modes we need to set up, now we have all the switches set, how we want the actual craft to fly. So we'll click on flight modes with its red signal. So now we know that channel 5 is the one that we need to set up, we can start assigning bits and pieces. Now we can assign different flight modes to different switches, or you can have it set up like I have here, which is where one rotary switch gives you six flight modes. So we need to enable stabilize main, tell it it's on channel 5. The threshold in here doesn't actually move because it's always in stabilized, but once we've got that, next one then is out at altitude control and you'll notice that each of these yellow bars are saying where that feature comes in. So if we have something like a switch where if I move it back one, altitude hold. we have altitude hold then the channel value moves and we can see that we have altitude control. So what I need to do is I just need to move the trigger just below the level that the radio is going to be at. So now you know that, you can work your way through each of these, turn on and off all of the different settings. So I'm having it here just for the moment that stabilize mode is pretty much always going to be on and we're going to have altitude as a separate switch. So now we've got that set, if we go back to the main board and you'll see we have lots of errors coming here at the bottom and that is just because there's one last thing that we've got to set up and this is the one that can take a little bit of time. So we need to calibrate all the different sensors. So again, we're clicking on anything that's red and following the instructions. So the last thing that's left for us to do is play with the sensors and this is the bit that takes the time and that's why we've left it for last. Uh, I'll show you the overall process and it's just a case of working your way through it. So again if we click on the red sensors tab it'll show us all the things that we need to do and of course everything is absolutely red because right now nothing has been calibrated. We need to go and calibrate the compasses, the gyroscopes and the accelerometers too and to do this we're going to have to hold the board in lots of different orientations and the way it works is that on the screen here it's going to show us lots of images of the craft. It's going to use a plane or a fixed wing as an example to help with orientation and what we need to do is then put the board or the craft in each of those orientations and hold it into each of those positions until it goes green and it's kind of like having to light all the squares up and when it's happy and they're all green then you've completed that piece. So let me show you what I mean. Go and calibrate the compass first. Before you do this, do remember that the compass is here. There's an internal one and there's also an external one that we've connected up that's up there in the GPS too. So they need to be perfectly aligned. And mine here, I've taken quite a bit of time making sure that this GPS compass module is exactly aligned with the board. Now, if your board isn't aligned like this in the default position where the front of the board is facing the front of the craft, then you can, can select the rotation here. But as it's standard, we're going to leave it. So the first thing we're going to do is then click OK. It's going to start the individual calibration steps and we're going to then hold the board in one position. And now it's detected that we have that position. It's going to ask us to rotate the board around. Now while it's flat we need to rotate it around and you need to have a very long cable for this and you need to just take your time try and keep it as level in that orientation as you possibly can and just keep moving it until it says completed. Then the next one is we'll turn it upside down which is the next one here. Once it detects it's upside down it'll tell us that that's the position that we're in and now we've got to rotate it so again keeping it completely upside down we're going to do this little dance and all we're going to do is we're going to work our way through each of these individual pictures one by one until they are all green. Now this takes quite a bit of time to do and you just have to sit with your long USB cable and take your time and if something doesn't work out you can cancel it and start it again 
Occasionally I've had it where in doing the calibration, unless you keep it perfectly in the or orientation and you have it away from stray magnetic fields, it occasionally won't work. So just keep at it and eventually when you come back, you'll be able to have all of them done. So when you finish moving it around in each orientation and all six of the blocks are nice and green, then the compass is green too and we've finished with that piece. Then we can move on to the gyroscope. So let's click on that one next. It's going to be a very similar situation. For gyroscope calibration, you'll need to place your vehicle on a surface and leave it still. So we need to make sure that we have a nice level surface and somewhere that there won't be too much vibration that will be read by any of the sensors as movement. So we're going to click OK. So we're going to hold it flat and we're just going to hold it completely still, not move it at all. You really want to be just leaving this on a table, um, not touch it, just let it completely do everything. Cal motion, retrying. Fantastic. So now that's the gyroscope done. Next one we need to do is the accelerometer. So the accelerometer calibration, you need to place your vehicle on all six sides on a perfectly level surface. So we need to teach it what each direction feels like to completely lock in the accelerometers. So again, no rotation that we need here because we have the standard one. So we're going to go and follow each of the instructions. So we're going to have it completely flat and we're going to hold it in that position, not move it at all. Then we're going to turn it onto its back and again hold it completely still, don't move it at all. And what we're going to do is we're going to run through and again put the craft in each of these orientations until all six of these images are nice and green. So just keep moving the craft around into each of the orientations and keep it there until it's completely happy. And then when that bit's done, the accelerometer goes green as well. Last thing then to do is to level the horizon. It says we'll need to place the vehicle in its level flight position and press OK for us. For something like a quadcopter, we're just gonna rest it on its feet. So we're gonna click OK. We're going to put the machine as flat as we can and horizon level is green as well. So that is how we have to calibrate the sensors and that's the bit that takes a bit of time. If we jump back into summary now, everything is nice and green. So we're at the point where we can start to actually plug things into it and potentially fire it up and make sure that all the motors are starting at the same time. Remember that we already have a PIX Hawk series and an APM series where we've gone through the complete setup. So this is just really showing you how Q Ground Control does the calibration routine and how you get over so that you get rid of all the alerts that were flashing up here and you'd get all of the red bits in the interface. So that's the hard bit done here. We have the radio calibrated. It knows the airframe type that we're in. We have our motors plugged in. We are getting close to having our first little test flight. So let me stop it here. We'll get ready to plug everything in and we'll give it a go. Now all the configuration is complete, we can actually start to test the model. Now I finished putting my model together and I've also got a little tablet Windows PC here. Uh, we actually reviewed this in another video recently, so go and have a look at that. Uh, this is great because you can take it to the field and it kind of allows you to do all the checking. Now the couple of things I would do before we put on the props and tests that we need to do as well. Now the Pix Racer, just like some of the others, uh, will like to have everything set up. If something isn't set, then it won't arm. So a quick and dirty way to make sure that everything's working, if I just move this tablet PC out of the way for a second, 
quick and easy way to check it's all working is just to plug it in and give it a go. So here we have our receiver plugged in. Uh, you actually don't need the arming button and the buzzer. I've actually just connected them out here while we just fire this little guy up. Uh, we've made sure all the cables are fine. We've double checked everything. Just tighten the bolts on the frame. So now what we can do is we're actually going to power on the radio. Welcome to Toronto. Uh, and we're going to plug this in. Uh, double check all your electrical connections for the last time. That looks promising and we have a blue flashing light. Now, now it's uh, on and all working. If I just try and arm it, I'm going to hold the stick over to the bottom right position. We should see the blue light go solid on here and we should also hear the beeper announce that we're ready. Now the cool thing is, is we don't need to press the arming button. It is, as we talked about in the earlier videos, optional uh, for the Pix Racer. So we might actually take that off. But let me just try and arm it. That looks fantastic. I'll disarm it. Great. Now, what I would do is I would check a couple of things. First of all, plug it into your PC. Double check that the horizon is absolutely level. If it's not, go through that last calibration routine. Then I'd also double check that uh, when you turn off the radio and the props are running, uh, that the fail safe kicks in and everything stops and make sure that that's set. And the last thing to double check is if you leave it outside for a little while, the GPS should eventually get a lock and you'll see that displayed on your ground station. So just double check all those pieces are working. If that all works, then you are ready to put the props on. Go out and try your first test hover. So let me do that here and then let's go outside and just see if this thing's going to fly. The last couple of things we need to do is to actually change the kind of frame that we have here. So I'll just jump into airframe. Uh, lots of different options here. I've just realized that, of course, this isn't an X frame. It's a slightly different layout. So we have the um, different styles here. We can actually choose what kind of frame we're dealing with. Uh, at the moment, we'll just try Team Black Sheep Discovery just to try it with. The other thing that we need to do is to calibrate the ESCs. I've just spotted one of my motors is very slightly behind the others. So what we're going to do is go into power and click on calibrate. It's going to say plug the battery in. So as the calibration is complete, you can now disconnect your battery. So now we've got the fail safe, the motors and everything else set up, we can try our first test hover. So I'll fire up the motors, you can hear the beep at the start. I think some of my front motors need recalibration just a little bit more again, but I want to show you kind of the genuine first test hover. Also seeing a little bit of oscillation, so I might try different frame types. And failing that, I might then try and play with my PID settings. But hopefully for those of you that are interested in the Pixhawk, you now understand the process you have to go through to get this thing set up. So stay tuned for future videos where we'll investigate more about Q ground control and the Pix Racer. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.